Okay, hi, we're back. As I suspected, my squash took 50 minutes because my oven is ancient. But I want you to see, here's what they look like when they came out. Nice and, you can see that nice and golden. And what I did halfway through, um, I flipped the butternut squash, but you can see these are fork tender. So these are done. So now what we're gonna do is um, do something with the acorn squash. So what I'm gonna do is I use tongs. You can just get these at the dollar store or something, doesn't have to be fancy. And turn it over and you can see how pretty that is. And they're very, very fragile. So if you are, see how that is? Now that pretty. If you are, um, let me scoot that over. They're real tender too. See, I just sit, do that. So at this point, there's a couple of things you can do. You can either leave them like this and put um, a little bit of butter and some seasoning, some brown sugar, and um, serve them like this, or you can scrape the inside and combine it with something, um, like I said earlier, quinoa or couscous or some of your favorite uh, rice recipes and stuff it back in there, pop it in the oven, let it brown up a little and serve it. But for right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this one the traditional way, real simple with just a little bit of butter, brown sugar and um, allspice. So we have gotta get a fork and a spoon. And you just, they're hot, so you have to be real careful. And you just gently scrape, kind of like you do uh, a baked potato. You want to get all that. These are hot. Oh, scrape it. You don't don't need to go all the way to the edge. You can because you want to get all that nice flavor. Go all the way around. And you can do this. Um, scrape this pulp out, this meat, it's delicious. And use it um, in conjunction with another stuffing, or you can just leave it, leave the acorn squash as it was, and put the butter in it, and we'll do that one this way. Or you can just leave it just like it is, and you leave it just like that, and then put a little dollop of butter in there. And then a little bit of brown sugar on top. Because when people eat these, they're gonna mash them up anyway and they're gonna get that brown sugar and all that good stuff in there. And it looks prettier, I think, like that. But it's up to you, however you wanna do it. Some people don't know how to eat these, so, you know, you might have to tell somebody, scrape the insides and go for it. So that's, that's that. That's all there is to that. I um, always add a smidgen, just a smidgen of salt because the salt really brings out the other flavors. It's not fancy, but man, is it good. And so the tongs, they're awfully handy. And then when you put them on a plate and get ready to serve them, you have a nice presentation. The butter will melt. You can see that, how it's melting. So I think I like this one better than that one, but it's up to you. Now, if you put stuffing on top of this, something inside it or whatever, like I said, just pop it back in the oven for a few minutes um, and then you can keep these in the oven on 200 until you're really ready to serve them. So the butternut squash turned out beautiful. Let's taste it though, because I have a feeling it's gonna need more salt. Mm-hmm. It does, just a smidgen. Like I said earlier, you can always add more salt, but you can't take it out. So what I do with these is uh, I'm gonna put those in a bowl and I'm thinking 
something different. You could either sprinkle them with some a little bit more brown sugar and butter, just like we did the acorn squash, or um, drizzle a little bit of maple syrup on top. So I don't know if I have any maple syrup, but let me get a bowl. And we'll get these off in this little bowl. I told you it didn't make much. So this was a two pound <clears throat> butternut squash. And I bet you we got maybe, oops, one jumped off. Lord, I bet we got uh, a cup and a half, maybe. The other thing is though, this is interesting. If you use, um, at the holidays, if you, if you serve this open buffet style or whatever, if you're not plating the food, which most people don't, this is, this is one of those big spoons. And if somebody went in to get them some, they'd only get about five pieces. I mean, it's hard to determine. You can always go back for seconds, but um, that's about one serving. So I would say this guy, this maybe a two pound squash gave us maybe four servings. So it's, uh, it's hard to, to know because, um, you know, some recipes say one large squash and some say two small ones. Well, we don't know what's big and what's little. It's all relative, you know. So uh, let's see, I do have a little bit of maple syrup. I'm gonna drizzle some over it. And I might have to add a smidgen more salt because, um, I don't know, we'll see, we'll taste it. So on this one, what I'm gonna do here is just ever so lightly drizzle that over that. And then I'm gonna put a smidgen more salt because, and then when you wanna finish it off, you can do, um, a little bit of fresh uh, thyme or uh, oregano or nothing. Okay, so now we know how to make acorn squash and butternut squash. Uh, be creative, go out there, look around. I have, um, I'm gonna put these recipes on my website, just real basic, and then uh, maybe I'll get real creative and think of something to stuff the acorn squash with because even though it tastes delicious, it it's, it's always good to have alternatives. All right, talk to you later next time. Oh, next time we're gonna do cream gravy. So come back soon, because um, I'm gonna show you three ingredients, eight minutes, piece of cake. All right, thank you, talk to you later, bye.